What ho, chaps, how the devil? After another week of collectivist lunacy, this is going to be a rare serious post from me. When I was a lad, a friend of mine, Jim Swallow, he was my flatmate at 4-2 Commando. One night, after a night on the beer, he went back to the house of his ex-girlfriend and she flew into a jealous rage at some point in the night and murdered him. She drove a dagger into his heart as he lay upon the bed. When that happened, I remember being very angry about it, but at no point did I ever consider blaming a loosely affiliated group like all women for the murder. I only blamed one person for the murder, and it was the murderer, Danielle Bradley, who obviously was released from prison after about six paltry years. And I wanted to bring it up because I'm sick of hearing the word toxic masculinity. I'm here to tell all of you that there is absolutely nothing toxic about masculinity. And the very idea that it is toxic is harmful to the world at large. If it was true that being masculine was toxic, then lads without dads would be better adjusted, less criminal and better educated than those with them wouldn't they? We know that is categorically not the case. The violence and murder and abuse of individual women, which thankfully is mercifully rare in the Western world, is not caused by masculinity. It is caused by a people without a moral compass, regardless of their gender. The majority of men do possess a moral compass, and those men act in a virtuous manner, whether or not they are extremely masculine or a little more feminine, has nothing to do with your level of masculinity and everything to do with your empathy, your direction and discipline. If you harness masculine traits and give them direction, masculine men are some of the best men out there. And I don't mean fake manliness as defined by some crass stereotype from a TV show. Beards, steroids and monster trucks. There are masculine traits, well known, defined by professionals, psychologists. According to Wikipedia, those traditional ones include strength, courage, independence, leadership and assertiveness. So let's do them one at a time. A strong man with empathy, direction and discipline will assist those weaker than himself because he knows he can take it. A courageous man with empathy, direction and discipline will take risks. He will dash into a burning building to save a child because he knows that the young have not had the chance to live their lives and he values them and he wants to prolong their time on this earth. An independent man with empathy direction and discipline will expend his efforts to provide for his family himself and the world around him to a lesser extent because he doesn't want to burden others, not his family, not his friends, not society. A violent man with empathy, direction and discipline will only use his strength when he absolutely must. These are the sheepdogs that guard the flock against the teeth and claws of the wolves. These are the men that fight dictators, terrorists, evil, violent men wherever they find them, because the strong will ever seek to dominate the weak. An assertive man with empathy, direction and discipline will express himself effectively and he'll stand up for himself and he'll stand up for others that are less good at doing it themselves. He will respect the rights and beliefs of others and such behaviour will boost his own self-esteem and his confidence and he'll continue to be a good man. He won't become bitter and resentful and craven and want to see the world burn because of his own weakness. Men like this pass their knowledge on to others and they raise strong, happy children that know right from wrong. They have discipline and they're confident and they continue on his path when he is long gone and ensure that the people are happy and the world still runs properly in his absence. And they'll do the little things, won't they? Like holding the door open for the wives 
and giving them the jackets when they're cold and generally not being awful. Masculinity is not toxic. It is vital for the continuing good of humanity. Strong men find a code and they stick to it. When I was a lad, my personal favourite was the Iron Code of Drust the Legend. They stuck with me as a child and I never forgot it. Never violate a woman, nor harm a child. Do not lie, cheat or steal. These things are for lesser men. Protect the weak against the evil strong and never allow thoughts of gain to lead you into the pursuit of evil. What is toxic about masculinity? Men that have been so thoroughly brainwashed that they think masculinity is toxic have none of those traits. They will be passive and let evil men do as they please. They will be cowardly, stand for nothing and never raise their voice to defend others. They won't even have a work ethic because they'll be happy to stay and live with mum until the 40. They've got no pride, no independence, no strength. They will be useless as a partner, useless as a husband useless as a father and completely useless to society. I am a masculine man. I've always been masculine and I am a warm, friendly, happy person as a result of it. Pride is a whip for me. My father raised me to be so. Reading books by the likes of Tolkien and Gemmel taught me as a child. All a poor man has is his pride and when he is shaving he should be proud of the man that stares back at him. I aimed for the top when I joined the military. My masculine pride and some good luck saw me through. I didn't run across open ground to help my friends in Afghanistan because I wasn't scared. I did it because of my masculinity. Perhaps too much of it can sometimes be a sin, but it can also lead a man to feats of greatness. If you would rather die than shame yourself in the eyes of others, than embrace base behaviour and selfishness and spite and raising a hand against the weak, these things are for lesser men. Anyone listening to this, regardless of the awful events of the last two weeks, embrace your masculine traits and you'll be a strong, upstanding, useful, masculine man. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing. Never let anybody condemn you for the crimes of another. L and let us forever be rid of the phrase toxic masculinity. There is nothing toxic about it.